hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about O-level biology and specifically exam patterns. Now split this into three parts, okay? The easy ones, the mid ones, and the hard ones. And I'll place more emphasis on the hard ones, okay? Because that's where you guys want to score your A's. So before I step into each of them individually, correct? We're gonna, I'm gonna just gonna highlight three important things that occurs for all questions and you should get that into your mind as fast as possible, okay? Number one, right? Whenever you look at a question, is to identify the topic. Okay? So I'll put this as tips, general tips. Identify the topic at hand. Is it excretion? Is it nutrition in humans? Is it transport in plants? The better you identify a topic, the more confident you are, the more your keywords come to your mind and the better you score for that question, okay? Number two, and this is the most important point of the entire video. Write in excess over laziness. What in the world do I mean by that? The thing about biology, right, is that biology exams have point-to-point -point marking. So as long as you get a point, you give them one mark, okay? I like English, right? English is different. You write too much, right? You get lower marks Bruh. because they penalize you. But biology is not in that sense. So one reason that laziness is right, you look at a three mark question, you can write a lengthy answer as long as freaking possible. You, if you want more people, just ask your examiner for it during the exam, okay? There is no limited amount. There's no like fixed amount for writing. Do look at some of the photos right in front of you. This is the amount of length I write for a three mark question. And of course, these things require a lot of time management on your part, but I'll be explaining that in this video in more detail, okay? Please know you can write in excess as much as you want. And following this point, thought process as well. What I mean by thought process, okay? You are allowed in biology to write as much as you want. You can write out your thought process as well. I'll be explaining that in one of the questions in the heart section, okay? And that would really help you guys. So be sure to stick around till the end. And all the timestamps, all the whiteboard photos are in the description for you guys to save your own time, okay? So let's get right into the first one. First, coming to the basic questions or the easy ones, I have a great hashtag or certain acronym to help you guys remember this type of question. Hashtag SLIND. And from this video, we are going to create this hashtag. And what does this weird Instagram-ish hashtag stand for? S stands for state. L is for label. I is for identify. Guess the other two ones. N is for name and D, the thing you're most scared of, defining. Correct? This is hard to memorize stuff. Okay, so we have five things right here. If you like this hashtag, do give this video a like and comment down below the hashtag. That would be really great. Now, how, what do you mean by state question? Okay? Like example question, let me have like two I have two exam papers and I'm gonna show you some of the questions these two papers, one is my prelims and one is a practice paper. So the first question is right, for a state question, it's right in front of you guys, state a part of the gut cell, correct, which is represented by the tape and the space inside the balloon. When you look at this question, right, whatever you memorize, all the diagrams, right, that you memorize during your, when you're studying with your friends or studying by yourself, this is when the diagrams part of your notes come to use, okay? If you guys are ever stuck, all these things united by identifying the topic. Once you get a topic right, these things are the easiest free marks, guys. It takes so less time to solve, okay? So state questions. Now, label questions. What do you mean by label? Let's look at this. It's right on my feelings. Label the endosplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, and ribosomes. What is this topic on? Cells, right? It's the first basic topic. So how do you label? You put a line and then you write it. And the most important mistake that I don't want you guys to fall for is simple English mistakes like 
spelling. Please don't get your spelling ever wrong. It's a waste of time. It's totally useless way to lose marks, okay? So labeling, that's how you do it. And label using a pencil, of course, right? Now, I identify. Let's look at identify on the same paper, an excretion topic question. And it says identify the parts labeled A, B, and C. So this is like your kidney nephron, right? The glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tube. Again, be very careful of the spelling. Make sure that everything's correct. And there's your three marks. It's three marks. And this is where, this entire section is where you spend the least time. Because it's just content regurgitation. Regurgitation, man. Okay? So, this is the nephron. Now, name. We got this trophic level. This is the last one of the last few chapters. Identify the trophic level, which is a level in the food chain. Basic, man. This is like three marks. And defining, this is where I want to expand a bit more. Let's put this here. Defining. A lot of you guys, right, who are taking O level biology, know that this topic, this entire biology, is content heavy. And a lot of you guys do this mistake writing out definitions. What do you mean by writing out? When you're making your school notes right, you write and rewrite and rewrite the definitions and it doesn't help to write out the definitions. Instead, what you can do is two things, okay? Number one, only write out the words. So for example, define a gene, okay? Define, define a gene, which is the question right in front of you. It's a specific sequence of nucleotides that codes for a particular protein, okay? That's molecular genetics. So in your notes, right, instead of writing on the definitions, just write out the word gene, so you can read for yourself, okay? And if you guys, right, find definitions are really hard or really long, what you guys can do, right, ignore all those verbs like increase, decrease and weird stuff, just focus on keywords, okay? Just focus on the keywords and during exams, you can piece them together. Never ever rewrite it out. Do look at my previous video on note taking, which I did cover this in a bit more detail. So please watch that guys. It will really help you, okay? Now let's proceed to the medium level difficulty questions. The second section is the middle. So it's like the middle difficulty in terms of learning the marks, okay? So we're gonna split this into three categories, okay? It's gonna be pretty fun. Describe questions, explain questions, can you guys see it? Explain, describe, and then a merge of both of these. Disc plus explain, okay? I'll go into each of these categories and show you some example questions to highlight to you what I mean. So coming back to these exam papers, explain questions. Let's tackle explain questions first. They can ask you to explain a process, okay? They can ask you to explain a process. What are processes? Processes include clotting, for example, the entire process of the thrombokinase in the presence of calcium ions, these keywords come to your mind, all right? So let's look at one more example, which is actually in my prelims. Explain how intestinal maltase made in the endoplasmic reticulum gets secreted out of the cell. So that is the kind of question I'm talking about, explaining the process from inside to outside, how it goes. The second, how it can expand on it, is terminologies, okay? So I have a good example right in front of you. Explain what is meant by the term recessive allele. So right, the idea of recessive allele, you find that these terminologies, right, is actually not in your school. Like, if you look at a biology book, right, it will not be in this greyish box. The greyish box are meant for definitions. But when it comes to explaining terminologies, it has to come from your own understanding of these terms, okay? Write as much things as possible. If you don't know, just write and write. Maybe you could get one or two points there and get it correct, okay? You can write in excess. So that is always a tip that you should guys always remember, okay? After terminology, the last one is graphs. And I want to really go into graphs, okay? And there's a question right in front of you, I believe. And you guys didn't know all of the question types were well, actually in my prelim paper. So that is a really, really good one. Now, you have this, it's right in front of you. You have this graph, something like that, something like that. 
and ask you, right, explain the shape of the curve, correct? When you explain the shape of the curve, right, which is under graphs, there are a couple of things you guys should always take note. The first thing, the first mark comes from explaining at the origin what is happening. Or not really the origin, but like the first point where the graph starts. Now, then from here, the second mark comes from, from origin to another certain point. You see a pattern, like this thing is increasing in value. And then you explain why is there the increase. That's the second mark. The third mark, which a lot of you guys mix, is why is there a maximum? Why is there a maximum? Okay, you should address that. I have the answer right in front of you. But I'm not, we're not going to go deep into that. I just want you to highlight what are the marking points of it, okay? And then after that, the fourth mark comes from the decrease, which you see guys right here. So that's a two-mark question. So it's probably like one, two, three, four points, two marks, for example. So when it comes to explanation questions, you need the guys to know, right? The first approach is to look at number of marks. If it is a two-mark answer, for example, we need two points or maybe four points, depending on how nice the question is. Two marks, two points, for example. It's point to point. So you should identify like, oh, these are the things that the examiner is expecting. Maybe the examiner is expecting you guys to explain this, then this, then this, then this. And what I mean by that is look at mark allocation. Give a wild guess, right, during your exam, how are the marks for each question, explanation question, allocated based on what points you share. So maybe if you mention this is one mark, this is one mark, this is one mark, this is one mark, and it's like a four mark question, then probably you're right, okay? And then you explain it, you should get it correct, okay? Let's know how the mark allocation occurs. Next, we are going to move on to describe questions. Describe questions, right? They usually ask you to describe a function. So, I think I have it. The same excretion question. Describe the function of part A in the formation of urine in the kidney tube. Okay? So, what you need to do is identify and then describe the process step by step. What is happening? Okay? And this concept of step-by-step step will be addressed in the advanced section. Do stay out till that part of the video, which is the key part, okay? So step-by-step, step, identify, explain, like, yo, just regurgitation. This is quite easy to score. Now, description plus explanation is like the third category. And what is in description plus explanation? They ask you to describe and explain certain changes, okay? This is a change sign, okay? For sake of simplicity. Now, they can ask you to describe the changes in the graph. Like the question we had earlier, they can ask you to describe and explain the changes. So what you should use when you're describing changes, okay, you need to split into two parts. One mark for describe, one mark for explain, okay? So describe could be like increase or decrease, general increase, decrease, longer, shorter, this kind of terms, this kind of verbs or comparative, yeah, you know your English, what, what, whatever the category means, please use that. Explanation questions, use your knowledge to explain what is happening and why is there a great increase or decrease, okay? So this is the middle section. I hope you guys, these examples are so far helping you because we're going to move into the advanced section, not to be scared, and that's where I have really great tips to share, okay? Right, this is the... Last part, okay? Just bear with me for a bit more. We're almost at the end. Hard ones, the hard marks. And this doesn't mean it's hard for you. This is a very subjective thing. The first one is scenario-based. And I'm giving more importance to this, this question type, which is the most important. I want a scenario-based. I have an excellent example question right in front of your eyes, which is from my prelims. And yep, the answer is pretty long. It's split, okay? I'll tell you guys how I approach this question. And the question is, on a hot day, a person consume only meat before a day of energetic work. Explain the likely changes in the composition of the person's urine during the day. Again, this is an explained question and not a described question. So a lot of things we need to do. And basically, right, all scenario questions, they give you two things. See this, okay? They give you A, they give you B, and they ask you to link it together. Like 
marriage. Marriage, okay? So it's time to find the logic. Okay? We're gonna do it step by step. Remember? We talked about step by step in the previous page. Step by step explanation from A to B. And I'll give you an excellent example. I'll show you guys how to do it, okay? Let's go. Logic step by step. How do you do this? How do you do this? If you look at the first line, I say meat is very rich in protein. What am I trying to prove to the examiner by doing this? Stating. Just state. Just whatever your thought process is, right? Your thought process, you know? Just state it up. Like meat, what does it contain? Protein, okay? So who knows? That could be one mark. So we say meat contains protein. And next, after I state, right? I start to link my logic chain together. So this is where the logic chain occurs. And how does this weird terminology occur? We're not talking about logic pro. Okay, we're talking about logic chain, okay? What do you use? This is the approach, okay? Let's look at it in a more visual way. Keyword one, or concept one. Keyword two. And what you guys do is insert a verb or comparative adjective. Adjective, I, I don't know what they call it. So what I mean, verbs include increase, decrease, which I already covered, or longer, shorter, comparative adjectives. Yeah, I just stated longer, shorter. So if you look right, how I answered this question. So I started off. Okay, these kind of questions, another point to note is they span across many topics. And in this case, this question, right, tests you on both digestion in humans as well as excretion, okay? So just take that note, just take that note, okay? That's why it's called a bit hard marks. Span across many topics. So let's look at it. So it's rich in protein. Protein is digested, becomes amino acids, the excess, excess amino acids, okay? Another important keyword, I guess when you practice and practice, you get this keyword, the absorb, then they are like deamination, excess, converted to form toxic, excess urea. Again, I'm stating again and again and again the keywords. Okay, so I'm gonna emphasize this point right here. Keywords. Like really like push it out, push it out. Like push out all the keywords. Whether it's relevant or not, just push it out, man. Like there's no like restriction on you. You should not be lazy about it. Just push it out for the sake of it. You don't know it could be like both some marks. So I was like, no, I just put excess, excess, excess. And they were like, tick, tick, tick. I was happy. So more of a since it is a, this is where, this is the important part, guys. Once you're done with this, right? Increases, decreases, excess. Then see a concentration of increase, increase, right? This is where the mark, the, the differentiating mark comes in. Conditions checking. Let's kind of emphasize the importance of this. Man, if you look back at the question again, things that you missed is on a hot day. And a hot day means it's a lot of sweating, which I covered like at the end, the loss of water by sweating. So there will be like a smaller volume of concentrated urine because of more amino acids, smaller volume of concentrated. That is the B, okay? That is the outcome. So did you guys see like how I started from the protein, the, this part, the protein, and draw it step by step by step using this kind of stuff to reach the outcome, which is smaller volume of concentrated urine produced. That is the skill I want you guys to understand the most from this video. There's no need to be lazy, write as much as you can, take as much paper as you can. And this entire thing is in the description, guys. This entire photo is in the description. All the photos are in the description. I hope. This video was really helpful for you to find all the exam patterns, the approaches through these example questions. Next time you take a paper, hopefully one way or another this video helps you guys score much better, okay? Thank you guys for watching this video. Do share this video with your friends. Subscribe to this channel. I really value your time spending here, so please subscribe. Stay tuned for my next video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.